Hi and welcome to this new video. In this video I continue my OSCP technical guide and in particular in this video we will see the Active Directory section of my guide. As always I hope the video is useful. If you have any feedback please let me know. I'm looking forward to hear your feedback on this and that's it. Enjoy the video. I will divide this video in three different parts. In the first part, we will read the Active Directory section directly from my blog, which you can find at blog.leonardotamiano.xyz and then you can search for OSCP Technical Guide. It is one of the latest posts. After I finish reading the blog, I will showcase various commands from my OSCP cheat sheet, which is available from GitHub, link in the description. And in the last part, we will see a practical example on how to attack Active Directory. I've set up a virtual machine that runs an Active Directory. Right now, it's just a single machine with a single domain controller. And we will see in practice an attack known as Kerbe Roasting. So Kerbe Roasting. And I will explain a bit of theory and how in practice to do this sort of attack. Of course, this is just a small example to show what it means to attack an Active Directory setup. Once again, I hope the video is enjoyable. And so we start with reading the blog post regarding Active Directory. The last and arguably also one of the most important technological contexts contained within OSCP is the Active Directory context. So in my OSCP technical guide, I've divided the modules and the knowledge into four different technological contexts. And these four contexts were, the first one was the web and all protocols regarding the network. The second one is Linux. Then we find Windows and finally we find Active Directory. So Active Directory, I put it as one of the last technological contexts, but it's also one of the most important one. This is because learning Active Directory will significantly increase your probability of passing the exam. This is because in the final exam, the Active Directory portion is worth 40 out of the 70 points you need to pass. This is like more than a half. It's a lot of points. And if you manage to do Active Directory in your exam set, you are pretty good. You are, you are set very well. So you really need to focus your attention on how to beat Active Directory. In the exam, you do that and then you're good because, of course, you still need 30 points, but you can get them by doing the other independent targets. Now, in terms of the content itself that you will find in the PEN 200 course, which is the course offered by Offensive Security in order to obtain the OSCP certification, there are three different modules that deal with Active Directory. And these are, these are the names, Active Directory Introduction and Enumeration, Attacking Active Directory Authentication, and Lateral Movement in Active Directory. Now, as you can see from the name, these modules are self-explanatory. The first one is all about understanding the big ideas of Active Directory. Why do we need Active Directory in the first place? Why can't we just stick with Linux and Windows? Well, the basic idea behind Active Directory is that suppose you have a big network of machines. You have like 10, 20, 30, 100 different machines. Now, those machines are not separate computers managed by separate people, but all form an enterprise network, meaning that they belong to the same company. And you need to enforce different policies, different configuration, different setup with respect to this machine. What kind of resources can this machine access? This user, what kind of resources can this user access? Well, all of these things can be easily automated and managed through Active Directory. Of course, I said easily automated and managed, yes, but this also means that Active Directory is an extremely complex piece of technology. And so to actually manage it properly without introducing misconfiguration and vulnerabilities is actually extremely hard. So it is used to automate the hard task of configuring an enterprise network, and it means that there is a lot of attack area here. 
the attack surface is extremely huge. And this is why the first module also teaches about enumeration. Once again, OSCP is about enumeration. You need to gather all the intelligence, all the information about your system, and then you need to be able to look through it, to make sense of it, to understand it in a way that is functional to, to your need. And in this case, your need is to attack the domain. So maybe you start from a simple user, you obtain somewhere the credential for that simple user and you authenticate to the, to the active domain, to the domain network. Now, what do you do? Well, the idea is that you start to gather information through enumeration processes and you start to understand, okay, how is this domain configured? What can my user do? How can I try to abuse the privileges and the resources I'm given in order to elevate my privileges in order to, domain, to obtain the domain admin user, like in order to become a domain admin? And essentially the domain admin is sort of like the administrator, but not of a single machine, but of an entire network. Once you are domain admin, you can do whatever you want with your Active Directory network. And of course, there's a lot to say here. And a big part of this uh, introduction is also talking about authentication mechanism, meaning, okay, Active Directory forms a network, a network of computers. This means that you, a user or a machine, can act in two ways, like non-authenticated and authenticated. And there are two main authentication protocols, which we will talk in this video. But the idea is that you need to understand the various authentication mechanisms that work in Active Directory, that are implemented in Active Directory, in order to understand how you can attack them. Sometimes doing an Active Directory penetration test it's not really about finding a vulnerability in the protocol, but rather in understanding how the protocol works by definition and in abusing that simple fact. Maybe you bypass a step and you, you, you keep the rules all the same, but you bypass one step and you use the normal function of the protocol to get inside another machine. Like sometimes you don't need to break stuff, you just need to understand how stuff works and automatically you will find a way of bypassing controls and stuff like that. And of course, lateral movement is a big part of Active Directory. This is because, as I mentioned, Active Directory is not used within a single machine. It's not used when you have two or three machines. It is used when you have a lot of machines, like 5, 10, 20, 30, 100. And the idea is that these machines can be organized in hierarchical structures. So that, for example, you might have different active domains joined together in a so-called forest of domains. And so you need to understand exactly where you fit in the active domain network, how you can move around and stuff like that. Now, AD is a huge topic. And when we have to deal with a huge topic, it's very common to feel lost and confused about how to approach this subject. And this is, of course, not only applies for Active Directory, it applies for anything in information security. Anytime you start and you have no prior knowledge, you might find yourself confused. What are my first steps? Where do I start? What is the first vulnerability I study? Well, the idea is just to get started no matter what, no matter how. There is no right way to get started. You just start to absorb the information, but, and here is a critical thing you must do, you don't just uh, absorb information like a sponge. You need to process the information. You need to understand the information you are receiving. So for example, as I said, understand why Active Directory makes, makes sense in the first place. If I have 30 machines and I have to set a specific password policy for those machines, what do I do? Do I go manually to each machine to configure it? No, that's crazy. The idea of having a single server, the domain controller, which controls how the policy is to be handled, makes sense. It totally makes sense. So this is the first part, the idea part. Then comes the practical part. It's like, okay, how do I actually manage this policy? And then you find about group, of, group policies in Active Directory. And you find out stuff like that and you understand, okay, this specific policy I handle in this menu, I can, you know, set these values and things like that. And you start to build an intuition and then you move from the defensive side to the attacker side saying, okay, 
Suppose that an active uh, directory set up like this. How can I attack it? How can I use? Uh, what? How does this attack work? How does Kerberos thing work? And you learn piece by piece the various attacks. You practice them in a lab environment. So just that attack, and then you start to get into okay. This is like a little tool in my arsenal, and I can use it anytime. This sort of assumption are uh, true. Anytime these assumptions are true, I can use the Kerberos thing account, I attack. And so like that's how you do, you do incrementally. Incrementally you build knowledge. While the modules offered by the course can be seen as a simple introduction, I would pay a lot of attention to everything that is mentioned within these modules. So as I said, do these modules contain everything you need to know about Active Directory? Well, not really to truly understand Active Directory. However, they contain a lot of information and a lot of it you will need for the exam. So just pay a lot of attention because regardless, it's a good knowledge. Do they cover all the things you need to learn about it in general? Absolutely not. That's what I said previously. From my experience, however, the stuff they cover is the stuff you need to do the exam. So don't enter this preparation for OCP as sort of like, okay, now I will finally understand everything I need to know about Active Directory. Be more humble than that, because the material in OSCP is not really about deeply understanding all the different ways of dealing with Active Directory. It's more about having some knowledge with respect to the most basic enumeration processes, the most basic attacks in Active Directory, and the most basic lateral movement. It's still a lot of stuff, but it does not go too, too deep. So we'll not, you will not become an expert in Active Directory, but at least you will have an introduction to the world of Active Directory. And so let's get into some practical tips. First of all, get familiar with the basic tool you need to perform enumeration and lateral movements. Now, these tools are crucial because as I said, the difficulty part in Active Directory is all about enumerating properly, understanding what you can do with what user in what machine and doing lateral movement. So the best tool for this job is Crack Map Exec. This tool is a wonder. I really, really love this tool because it's extremely simple and effective. This tool is extremely useful anytime we want to test some credentials with respect to no Windows services, such as SMB, WinRAM or RDP. The tool is extremely flexible and easy to use. Here I show two particular examples. So the tool is used as follows. This is the name of the tool. This is the protocol we want to test, like SMB, Win, RM, RDP. Here can be either a list of IPs, like one after the other, a single IP, or like a file that contains a list of IPs. So we have different ways of interacting with the tool, which makes it extremely flexible. And it's extremely intuitive, at least to me it was. You just put the IP, then you put the dash U for the username, dash P if you have the password, or if you have the so-called NTLM hash, we'll talk a little bit about that, you can use the dash H option. This allows you to do a technique known as pass the hash where instead of authenticating with the original plain text password of the user, you actually authenticate directly with the hash. And to understand this sort of attack, you need to go back and understand the authentication protocols that are used and implemented in Active Directory. So like, no matter what you do, no matter your exam set, no matter anything, Crack Map Exec is the tool to use, in my opinion, for this sort of enumeration. You find a new credential and you want to test it out, just use Crack Map Exec. You put all the IPs in the domain, you put the protocol and you get the profit, you get the result. You change the protocol, just change the protocol and it works flawlessly. Another extremely useful tool is Evil WinRM. This is used to interact with the WinRM protocol, the Windows Remote Management Protocol, and it provides very useful, a very useful and functional shell. So you use CrackMap Exec to understand maybe if you have access to this protocol, to this WinRM protocol, and then suppose that you do, you just use this. Once again, very simple shell, you do dash E, dash E with the IP, dash U with the username and dash P with the password. The very cool thing about this evil WinRM is that the shell is extremely useful. And one functionality that I really, really love is the ability to download and upload files from and to the machines you're attacking, even in the cases of a proxy chain. 
So sometimes you do not use these tools directly. Sometimes you will append the command proxy chain before it because you actually want to use a SOX5 proxy when you're doing pivoting. And I've already made a video about port forwarding and pivoting, which was one of the previous section. So the idea is that even when you have such a, prox a SOX proxy tunnel with evil WinRM, you can upload and upload the file and it takes care of the routing all by itself. It's an extremely useful abstraction and a very functional shell and it has never disappointed me. Another two tools they go together is Sharphound and Bloodhound. Now these tools are to perform a really uh, functional enumeration and understanding process of the Active Directory setup. So the first tool, Sharphound, is a collector and it's a tool used to collect all possible information from a given domain. This data is then visualized by another tool which is called Bloodhound. And this other tool is used to visualize the data collected by Sharphound using the Log4j graph database. So the really cool thing about Bloodhound is that it allows you to see the information of the Active Directory in a, very, in a very structural way using a graph. So you are moving through nodes of a graph and you can set it with various options. It's extremely customizable. And so you have a visual understanding, a quick and intuitive visual understanding of the way, of literally the path to go from user to the maybe domain admin user. And it is literally a path because you are talking about a graph with nodes. So maybe it says, okay, you have this user that has access to these resources. Then with this privilege, you can become this other user and then you can have access to these other resources, which then allows you to become a member of this group, which has domain admin privileges or something like that. Like it's literally a path. And of course, this tool must be examined in a future video for sure. And then Chisel, which I already discussed in the port forwarding and pivoting section. This tool is used to create the SOX5 proxy as a tunnel point, as a pivot point uh, when you do the Active Directory setup. Because, and I talk about in the port forwarding and pivoting section, where you're doing Active Directory, typically you have Kali here. Then you have MS01 here, which is connected to MS02 and to DC01, the domain controller. So these two are connected. So essentially from Kali, you cannot directly access these other two machines. You need to go through MS01. So you need to set up a SOX5, a SOX, SOX5 proxy here. And so this is going to be your pivot point, your pivot point to get inside and uh, and to do that, I use Chisel and I already show how to use in the, previous, uh, in the previous videos. And in the future, I can do, of course, also more in detail explanation. In terms of exploitation, you should develop a good understanding of each of these attacks. Kerber hosting, which is the one we will, I will showcase at the end of this video. Asrep hosting, DC sync attack, capture and TLM v2 ashes with responder and relay these ashes with NTLM relay X. Now, these of course are not all the attacks you can do on an Active Directory setup. These are actually the most basic ones, the beginner sort of exploitation. However, from my understanding and from looking at the material, from studying the material of the course, these are the main attacks they mention. And so these are the attacks you are expected to know when doing the exam. And here for good understanding, I mean that you should be able to perform these attacks if you need to. So there's of course understanding comes in layers. A first layer could be like, I'm able to do the attack. A second layer could be like, I understand why this attack works. What are the basic building blocks of the attack? Like for example, what is the DC attack all about? Well, DC sync stands for DC synchronization, and it is a mechanism that allows two different domain controllers to share information. Now, the problem is that sometimes a given user might be configured with this privilege or like a given, uh, a given user might be configured with this privilege. So like he can ask the domain controller all the information, even though maybe he was compromised. So we have a compromised user, which is asking the domain controller all the information about its domain using a specific privilege. And this sort of form this DC sync attack. We are abusing the synchronization mechanism to leak all information, sensitive information about the domain. And this can be critical. So once again, it's all about understanding what can my user do? 
what kind of privilege can my does my user have? And then there is the Kerberos thing and Azure Pro thing which have to do with authentication and we will see the Kerberos thing at the end of this video. Now there are various tools that can be used to perform all of these attacks. I suggest to simply download and install the Impacket project as it contains various scripts that are able to perform all of these attacks. And in this video at the end I will install the Impacket project. I will show you how to install it and how to perform a simple Kerberos thing attack. If you use the default image of Kali Linux, you should have everything already installed by default. You can also check out the Kerbrute project, which is more oriented to brute force attacks, although I've never had to deal with such attacks during the course. So while these attacks are not really brute forcing attacks, there is another project which is also very, very interesting and potentially very useful, which is called the Kerbrute projects. And it, it, it implements a series of attacks that have to do with enumeration and brute forcing regarding the Kerberos protocol, which is one of the authentication protocols offered by Active Directory. Another key tool to learn, and this is really, really key, this is one of the most fundamental thing, is Mimikatz, which will quickly become your best friend during the Active Directory part. Why? Because this tool is used to dump various information from a system. Since the tool will look into processes which run with a high privilege level, it can be used in a meaningful way only after we become system, system administrator within a local Windows server. So like the idea is that the flow of the machine in the Active Directory portion is I find a machine, I try to get inside it as a local user and then I try to elevate my privileges. Once I've become administrator of that machine and I can access any process that are running in that machine, I have to use Mimikatz. Because with Mimikatz I will be able to dump all the sensitive secrets, password, ashes of all the machine that are currently in the RAM of the machine, in the memory of the machine. Now here there is a big thing to mention. And is that if you just install the basic version of Mimikatz and you directly download it into the target machine, typically some antivirus will notice that and will block you from your actions. However, in OSCP, there are no activated antiviruses. So you can use Mimikatz and you don't even need to protect it. You do not even need to pack it to bypass antivirus controls. You just download it and use it. This is because Antivirus evasion is not the objective of, of OSCP, so you don't need to worry about antiviruses and uh, you don't need to prepare your payload in accordance to if they will be detected or not by an antivirus. There is another course offered by OFSEC which is called OSEP and that course is about evading antivirus and the techniques used to do that. So for OSCP, don't worry about that. So the idea is that you become administrator, you just download Mimikatz and you use it. And for example, here, these are my favorite commands. This is to dump logon passwords and NTLM hashes. You call the Mimikatz, you, you do this privilege debug to understand if you have enough privileges to read the memory of high privilege processes and then you do sec url sa logon password full and then you do an exit and this will dump all the logon password and the ntlm ntlm hashes and of course this is also why to use mimikatz you need to become an administrator because to get this information what mimikatz does essentially is it enters inside high privileged processes which are the processes which contains this sort of data and it just extracts all this data. Then there is the LSA memory content where LSA stands for local security authority and it is a special process which is responsible for authenticating for authenticating users and verifying Windows logins. And so what you do is you save the various registry entries, reg save, here you put the name and here you put the file in which you want to save that, that entry. So the same security and system entries and you save them in three files, sam.hiv, security HIV, system HIV, and then you call Mimikatz also with the privilege debug, with the token elevate and with the LSA dump SAM and then you put all the files to dump all the critical information about uh, that, that uh, Mimikatz finds in this file and then you do an exit. So 
Going back, Mimikatz, learn, learn Mimikatz, learn Crack Map Exec, learn Evil Winner M. As you can see, there are not too many tools. With respect to Sharpound and Bloodhound, my suggestion is that you should learn this tool if you want to become a good Active Directory pen tester. However, for the sake of the exam, I found that since the exam is only about three machines, the network is not too big and you can manually enumerate it without such complex tools. Of course, these tools are extremely useful and probably necessary, like you cannot do them, you cannot do an AD pen test without them when you have big networks like 10 machines, 5 machines, 15 machines. At that point, you really need this sort of helper, otherwise, it's just too much information and you cannot make sense of it. However, for SCP, Let's be honest, it's just three machines, which means that with enough time and patience and skills, you can totally enumerate them by hand. Although you are free to use them because they are just enumeration tool, they do not automate exploitation and therefore they are allowed by the offsec policy. Because for example, the offsec policy does not allow you to use SQL map, and this is because SQL map also automates the exploitation aspect of an SQL injection. Continuing, you should develop a good understanding of the two main authentication protocols used within an Active Directory network, and these are NTLM-based authentication, which is more older, and it's sort of like the legacy authentication, and Kerberos-based authentication, which is more recent and is based on a cryptographic protocol named Kerberos. And I can make specific videos about that in the future, I'm preparing them, it just takes some time. Armed with this knowledge, you should then learn the following techniques, which will allow you to move around the Active Directory network and access resources that were previously blocked. So like these techniques have to do with authentication mechanism and with lateral movement. For example, the most simpler techniques that you will probably use is past the hash. The idea of this technique is that instead of authenticating with the clear text password, you will authenticate with the hash of the user. Another technique is overpass the hash, another is pass the ticket, another is golden ticket. So like, and then there's also silver ticket. There are many different techniques. It's just, I suggest you to learn this pass the hash for sure. The other ones, you could find them. It's more unlikely to find them, but just learn this pass the hash for sure and study these other as well. Armed with all of this knowledge, you should be able to be just fine when it comes to the Active Directory portion of the exam. If you want to dig a bit deeper, simply go to IPSEC Rocks and search for Active Directory. Still remember, when it comes to OSCP, keep things simple. This has to become a mantra for you during your preparation, because when the mind finds uncertainty, it is really hard to react in the best way, in the most, uh, let's say, useful and strategic way. For example, in my own exam experience, it has happened to me that I was blocked and I did not follow this mantra. I got lost in the moment, in the haze of the moment. I did not follow this mantra and this has made me lose some hours. Of course, I still passed the exam. I just did not do the final machine, but it could have been worse. So my suggestion is that you dig deep about how things work, but then you try to keep things simple because in the exam, they understand, like OFSEC understands that they are giving you 23 hours and 45 minutes, which means that they will not make extremely complex setup. Just stick to the basic, stick to every piece of information you find. Do not overlook anything else, but at the same time, do not make things more complex than they ought to be because they don't need to be complex in this case. They can be simple. The hard part is the enumeration. The hard part is the enumeration. In the future, I will make more content regarding Active Directory so that I can also, like in the future, I can also link to some of my content. But for now, of course, Ipsa content is extremely good. Just watch him do the machine, but try to understand, like, of, okay, for example, he's doing uh, a Kerberos thing attack. He's doing an ASREP roasting. He's doing a DC sync attack. Now he's using uh, past the hash technique. So like, watch him do the machine, but with a critical mind, with a mind of like, I'm taking note not only of the specific command he's doing in that act the box machine, for example, but of the more general technique that I can take home and that I can use, for example, in OSCP exam, in the OSCP challenge labs, on, in my own penetration testing activity. 
because at the end of the day of course every time things change but some techniques stay the same and we need to understand the patterns of these techniques now to continue the video we will move into the second part in which i showcase the cheat sheet i prepared available in the github and i will discuss the things related to active directory okay so now we will see some of my cheat sheet i will use emacs with org mode but you can also read it directly from github you can clone it you can play with it however you want that's the idea so we can focus on the org file now with respect to the active directory portion of course we need to talk about enumeration there is act windows active directory enumeration for example here i put some commands like list list of currently joined machine in the active directory so you this is powershell you do get adc ad computer with the filter and this filter is like for example this is the name of the domain of one of the challenge lab which is medtech here you can put scp.lab or scp.exam things like that however your domain is called and of course here the filter is essentially i'm taking everything also here you are taking specific properties like the ip for address the operating system the operating system service pack things like that and then you you format them in a particular way that's not really that important and uh, so this is like useful if you get inside an active directory here i just showcase crack map exec so it's like uh, to the various protocols the various ips the usernames and also the cool thing about crack map exec and here i use proxy chains before because it must be used like in this case i use it with a sox5 proxy you can remove these proxy chains the cool thing about crack map exec is that for example when we are using smb the smb module we can use the flag shares to enumerate all the available shares this is very very useful then here i put share pound and blood down so like essentially it's First, I transfer sharp hound and I use the collection method all. I call it with collection method all and it creates a zip file with all the data collected. And then essentially I start the Neo4j database. I connect to the database and I launch bloodhound in local. Of course, this deserves its own video to how to use sharp hound and bloodhound. These are just few commands. Here I also meant to use power view which is sort of like a library to enumerate the domain, but I still have to finish it. These are all things that in the future I will keep improving and I will make content about it. So like if you're interested, subscribe and you will see all of it. So like with respect to Active Directory enumeration, here there are not too many commands. I need to sort of like expand this area. But you can also use the basic window commands, like for example, net user, and you just append the dash domain like uh, the slash domain sorry the slash domain and you get all the user of the domain because each machine has a local state and there's also the state of the entire domain and so this first thing about enumeration is not too much it's mostly about crack map exec which you should use now a different interesting section is the exploitation section so we go also to windows ad now the first section brute force in Kerberos I did not put much because I still did not use it so like I put the link to the tool and the various utilities brute user brute force password spray user enum but I did not use them so I still have to fill those dots up those to do's then we see Kerberos thing now Kerberos thing is a technique that we will I will showcase directly in a real setup later to finish off this video but essentially the idea behind Kerberos thing is that we will connect to the domain controller so we have to give the dcip this is the ip of the domain controller we will connect with a particular account so it will ask the account and then we will request a specific ticket to all the possible services that we can use this this has to do with Kerberos thing I will mention a, a lot of details at the end of the video regarding this specific uh, attack but after this command we should get a ticket and this ticket will contain a hash the a hash of a password and then we can crack this hash with hashcat with code 13100 so like we get this hash we crack with hashcat and we get the password so like this is uh, this is the idea essentially then there is as reprosting and uh, to perform this attack uh, i use the script get user spns of in packet sometimes it's also like in packet dash sometimes you just install in packet and in the name of the script is how you call it there's also another tool Re Re rubeus rubeus i think it's pronounced this tool you use within windows so from within a windows box 
join with the Active Directory, you can use this tool. While this other tool, this get user SPNs, you can use also remotely from Kali Linux, which is what we will do in this example. So like as rep roasting is sort of another roasting type of attack. In this roasting type of attack, the idea is that we will extract a specific ticket and this ticket contains the hash of a password. So that's the general idea. And then we can crack it offline. Depending on where we do it in the authentication mechanism, we can either do Kerber roasting or as rep roasting. With Kerber roasting, for example, we need the valid credential of an authenticated user in the domain. With as rep roasting, we do not even need that. We just extract the ticket and then we can crack it. We do not need to be authenticated. Therefore, as rep roasting is much more powerful than Kerber roasting. But once again, we specify the IP of the domain controller, we request the ticket, and we put the ticket in the file ashes, and this is the name of the, of the user we want to attack. Once again, we can do this with Rubeus. Once we have the, the ticket, we can crack it. With Ashka, this time the code is 18200. The, the other time was 13100. So that's the idea. Here I do a lot of other stuff like DC sync. So here I say all the privileges that a user needs to have to launch this attack. Suppose that we have uh, these privileges, then we can use Mimikatz with the flag LSA dump DC sync and the user that we want to obtain the information. So we are, we are saying to the domain controller, give me all you have about this user. It is going to give us the NTLM hash, for example, and then we can crack it. So we can either do it with Mimikatz or with Impacket secret stamp. So this is another script from, from Impacket. Just this user, this is the name of the user we want to have. This is the like uh, credential for the domain that uh, of the user that has all these privileges. And this is the IP of the domain controller. Sort of like we are abusing the fact that we can synchronize domain controller stuff but we are using that to, extra, to, to leak information about the various users. And notice that we can also leak information about the administrator. And by default, members of the domain admin, enterprise admins and administrator groups have these rights assigned. So this is a really powerful attack. Continuing, we find the silver ticket technique. This technique abuses the way that the Kerberos authentication protocol works. So what's the idea? The idea is that in Active Directory, when we want to access a service, we do not give that our password to the service directly. At the same time, the authentication must happen. Therefore, a service provider, like for example, say that we have a web server, the service provider must know if we are allowed to access that service, that specific service. And this is where Kerberos comes in. So in Kerberos, the first thing we do is we authenticate to the Kerberos network. And during this first authentication, we are given a specific ticket, which is called a ticket granting ticket. So this is sort of a ticket and it allows us to obtain other tickets. So this is the first step. To obtain this TGT, we need to authenticate properly to the Active Directory network through the Kerberos authentication protocol. Now, once we have this TGT, we can actually start to obtain another kind of ticket, which is called the TGS, which stands for Ticket Granting Service. Once again, we use this once we have this Ticket Granting Service, and this Ticket Granting Service is given for a very specific service if we are allowed to access that service. And essentially the idea is that with that, we can then access the service because to the service provider, we just give our TGS and it automatically checks if, if like we are good and if we can access that service. And the idea of the silver ticket technique is that we can craft custom ticket granting service called silver tickets. They're sort of silver because they allow us to access a specific service, even if initially we were not authorized to do that. And this ticket is created starting from a bunch of information and then using Mimikatz. Of course, later on, I can go into more detail about this, but we have no time right now. It's just a type of technique in which we are creating a special Kerberos tickets to sort of bypass the authentication mechanism, but using the rules of the authentication mechanism. Then we have the responder capture and the relaying. So here we work with the fact that sometimes we might, we might have access to a shell, 
but we do not know the NTLM hash of the user that used that shell. So we can just trigger, for example, an SMB connection and in that triggering to our endpoint, and we use responder, so like we set up a responder in our Kali box, we trigger from the Windows shell a connection to our Kali box, and in that triggering, the Windows server is going to be like, okay, you want to connect to this SMB server, I will send to the server my hash credentials, my NTLM hash, and so we can capture the NTLM hash. It's sort of like a way to force the capturing of this credential, and there's also a way to relay these credentials to access a different service without knowing the hash explicitly. So this is one of the idea, and this ends in terms of exploitation, and to finish off, we find the lateral movement in which we find the virus stuff. I will not go over all the details, you can just look in the cheat sheet. I will mention about evil winner arm and other methods for obtaining access to a shell. This is evil winner M in action with the past the hash or with the password explicitly. Here I mentioned about past the hash and how it is done, the different ways of doing that with the different programs. And you know, I, I talk about RDP, how to set up RDP, how to connect with RDP and things like that. So this covers the cheat sheet section. And now to finish the video, I will showcase how to actually do a Kerberos thing attack to extract the information of a service account. Okay, so the setup is as follows. Here we have a domain controller, Windows, uh, Windows Virtual Machine. And here I have like a PowerShell and we can check, for example, that the IP of this machine is uh, 172.616.250.141. So like uh, we can ping it, we can ping it just to check if we have connectivity and we have connectivity. Now the idea is that we're going to perform a Kerber hosting attack on this Windows active uh, domain controller essentially. Now if we do net user slash domain, we can see that in this uh, domain, we have a bunch of users. In particular, we have the replay user and we have the svc underscore sql. So the idea of Kerber hosting is that first we start by using the credential of the replay account. So we can connect using the replay account credential. And to showcase that, I'm just going to switch user. So I'm going to do like uh, here. I'm going to sign out and I'm going to connect using the replay account. So here I say other user. Ripley and the password of Ripley is simply Ripley and we can log in into the account and so with those credentials we've now logged in with Ripley that's that's really good so like who am I with priv and we have uh, we don't have much privileges here now the idea is this can we use the credentials of Ripley to obtain the credential of the other account which was the svc underscore sql and the idea of Kerberosing is exactly this. So essentially, the SVC SQL account has an associated service principal name, SPN. This makes this account a sort of like service account. This account provides services. Here I'm assuming, for example, it can provide a database connection server. Like it is an account used to manage the database connections, the database system and things like that. Of course, in my setup, there is no database. It's a minimal setup just to showcase this specific attack. So we know the credentials of Ripley. How can we work with that? Well, from now on, we don't even need to look at the Windows shell because it is going to act in the background. So suppose we are an external attacker. We just know the IP address of the domain controller. So how do we deal with this? Well, first of all, we start a Python virtual environment and install the dependencies to perform the attack, which in our case is just going to be the in-packet package. So we're going to start the, um, the Python and it's going to install in-packet. Now it's going gonna, it's gonna to install all the dependencies. We just wait a little bit and then we should be good to go. Okay, we are good to go. Now, how do we know if we can use this attack? Well, the idea is that we're going to see, okay, how many accounts with SPNs are present in the Active Directory that I'm attacking? Because as I said, not all accounts have associated SPNs, where here SPN is a shorthand for saying service, service principal, principal name. And from what I've understood, of course, if you have better information, more detailed information, Please let me know, I'm open for feedback. From what I understood, anytime an account has an associated SPN, it becomes targetable to this Kerberos thing attack. 
because with Kerber hosting essentially we are saying to the domain controller hey can you give me all the accounts that offer services now to actually perform the attack is quite easy we will first use the get user spns script this is a script from impacket and we can access it because first we've activated the python environment and then we install the impacket package so how do we use this script well the first option is to put the ep of the um, of the domain controller which we said so the ip i'm gonna write it here just to remember so we do get user spns we write the ip dcep and we write this essentially i'm just gonna copy and paste so this is the first thing we do then we write oscp.lab the name of the user that we have already so the name of the user that we know the credential of so we do this it's gonna ask give me the password i put password because password is the password of ripley and look what it's gonna say to me it's gonna say look this is the list of accounts with service principal name this is the service principal name this is the name of the account and this is the password last set last logon once we have this so we see okay there is some accounts that we can access we can do we, we use the flag request with the flag request we're actually requesting essentially a ticket for that service so we do request we do the password once again and here we have this sort of like ticket this message and this message contains the hash of the password of this user so i repeat again this message that we just received it's a way to access the service it's a sort of ticket granting service i think it's a should be this ticket granting service tgs here we can we can see it krb5 tgs so tgs stands for ticket granting service now by construction the Kerberos protocol constructs this TGS. There are various components of this TGS, but one of those components that make up the TGS is the hash of the S SVC SQL password. SVC SQL pass. So we have the hash of the service account password. Now, once we have this hash, we can simply just copy it. Essentially, we can copy it. So we can copy this, we can copy this, and we can put it in a file. So like we can say touch SVC SQL hash. So we create this new file, we open it and we paste it all. So we have this hash and then we can simply crack it with hashcat. So we can do the, the actual code is we can do hashcat, we can do M13100. We can use the rock word list, which I already have here. It's a typical rock word list. So for example, if I take the first... 10 lines so this is our the 10 first password in rock and then here what do i do i just do hashcat m13100 rock and then force and then of course i have to put also the um, the name of the of the hash which is soc sql so let's see and then after a while it found the password and the password is big red one so we know that the password this account is big red one and to actually understand if this is the case what we can do is just we can go back to vmware and we can log in into that account of course this wouldn't be done like physically because we wouldn't have access to the physical machine but with a remote protocol but let's just try svl sql and then i write big red one so here the password is big red one i log in and i log in into the account so this is the idea behind kerber hosting just to repeat myself the idea behind kerber hosting is that by construction the kerberos protocol when an authenticated user wants to access to a service a tgs ticket is created and this is the TGS ticket that is created. This is the ticket. This ticket, however, contains the hash of a password. And in particular, it contains the hash of the SVC SQL service account password. Given that we have an offline hash, we can crack it. And once we crack it, we obtain the clear text password of this user. Once we have this password, we can log in with that user. We can authenticate with that user. We have compromised that user. So the, the vulnerability of Kerber hosting is like we just use the way the protocol works. There's not much about it. The problem, of course, is how did we get this authenticated credential? But that's a different problem. Assuming we have authenticated credential to the domain, we can move 
to a different account, to this SVC SQL. And the idea here is that like service account pass passwords should not be crackable because if they are crackable, then I can easily crack them through this sort of attack. And once we have, for example, the the account of this SQL, SQL, uh, SQL, we can check its privileges. So for example, we can say we do to PowerShell, we can say who am I priv? And I mean, in this case, we don't have many more privileges because it's just a simple machine that I'm setting up for doing tests and doing making videos. But the idea is that in real scenarios, given that, that, that what we compromise is a service account, typically we will have more privileges. Typically that account will run with more privileges, which will allow us to move further into the Active Directory setup. And so this concludes the Active Directory video for my OSCP guide. In the future, of course, I can talk about specific techniques. I hope it was enjoyable. If you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments. If you're interested in this content, please subscribe and I will keep creating more. And that's it, to the next video.